some of the crazy conspiracy theorists who believe in some or all of this theory include people like Samuel L. Jackson, John Boyega, and even George Lucas. In a recent Twitter Q&A, Samuel Jackson said that he believes Mace Windu is alive. The only person left to kill that would mean anything in episode three would be me. I was trying to figure out, really? Can't you just like injure me and whatever? But in my mind, I'm not dead. Jedi's can fall incredibly high distances and not die. You hope Mace Windows still alive? Of course she is. That's a long drop. Jedi's mm -hmm. can fall from amazing distances, and there's a long history of one armed, one handed that's Jedi's. True. That's, that's true. true. That's so, true. have you why had any not? talks with anyone about that? Uh, no, only George. Well, what did he have to say? George Even with like, hey, I'm okay with that. Yeah, you can be alive. So he's like laying low like Obi-Wan. He's just laying low while the exactly. dark side's taking over. Yeah. Samuel Jackson has also stated dozens of times that he very much wants to be in the new Star Wars movies. Well, yeah, I'd like to be in I'd like to be in the new Star Wars. I'd love to be a part of it. Dad, I want to be in Star Wars now too, when JJ <laughs> Star Wars. I mean, come on. And even John Boyega has stated that he believes in some conspiracy theories involving Finn, and that there's a lot more to the characters in The Force Awakens than meets the eye. There's no way that our stories are so simple. I've still got some conspiracy theories. I was at a party and someone behind me just tapped me on the, sh on the shoulder and was just like, yo, Black Jedi! I turned around, it was Samuel Jackson. <laughs> He's like, you my son! <laughs> So first of all, we need to establish that Mace Windu didn't actually die in Revenge of the Sith and is still alive in the new trilogy. So let's break down the Mace Windu versus Palpatine fight scene. Let's start with Anakin cutting off Mace Windu's arm. While everyone knows that getting your arm cut off in Star Wars has never been a lethal injury, dozens of Jedi have had their arms cut off and lived. Secondly, he's hit with the full power of Palpatine's force lightning. While this clearly would injure and scar Mace Windu, it almost definitely didn't kill him. For one, Mace Windu makes a grunt sound when he goes flying out of the window. So we know he's still alive after being hit with the lightning. Also, Force Lightning has never killed anyone in any previous Star Wars movies. Palpatine hit Luke and Yoda with the Force Lightning and didn't kill either of them. Count Dooku hit Anakin with the Force Lightning and he didn't die. And even when the full power of Palpatine's Force Lightning was deflected back onto himself, the lightning didn't kill him either. And lastly, Mace Windu is shot out of the window and falls from a great height. But as Samuel Jackson has said, Jedi can fall from great heights and be completely fine. In fact, no Jedi has ever died from a fall in any of the Star Wars movies yet. And Jedis have fallen from even higher than Mace did. Even Anakin fell hundreds of feet in the same city of Coruscant and landed on a car completely safe. So of course Mace Windu, a Jedi Master, would be able to land safely. Now you might be thinking, Snoke looks nothing like Mace Windu. He's old, he has ghostly white skin, he's scarred all over his face, etc. But when you think about it, that's exactly how Mace Windu would look when you account for everything that has happened to him. The first being he was hit with the full power of Palpatine's force lightning. And when the exact same lightning was deflected by Mace Windu onto Palpatine's own face, Palpatine's skin turned turned from a normal flesh color to a ghostly white. It also severely disfigured, scarred, and burnt Palpatine's face beyond recognition. And that's exactly what it did to Mace Windu as well. It disfigured his face, changed his skin to a pale ghostly white, burnt and severely scarred Mace Windu, just like it did with Palpatine. 
Snoke also looks very old and even says that he's been alive to see the Galactic Empire rise and fall. I watched the Galactic Empire rise and then fall. So he's been alive since the prequels, which makes sense if he's Mace Windu. Mace Windu was alive in the prequels to see the Empire rise and fall and would now be an old, fragile man. And as for Mace Windu's lost arm, he clearly would have a lifelike mechanical arm just like some other Jedi's who've lost an arm. And the scar on his head could be from hitting his head during the fall on Coruscant. And it is worth mentioning that they are both bald as well. Before we get into Mace Windu's motives, we need to establish that he isn't as good and innocent as you might think. In fact, Mace Windu uses more of the dark side than probably any other Jedi. You may not have noticed, but Mace Windu uses a badass purple lightsaber. Along with it being cool and all, it also symbolizes Mace Windu's balance of both the dark and the light side of the Force, as blue and red combined make purple. In fact, Mace Mace Windu is one of the only Jedi's to use Vapad, a force state of mind that allows the user to channel his own inner darkness into a duel. This means that when Mace Windu fights, he uses the dark side of the force, but he tries to control and balance it so it doesn't completely overtake his emotions. And you can definitely notice this whenever he fights. He cuts off Jango Fett's head and was about to kill Palpatine when even Anakin said it was not the Jedi way to just kill Palpatine without a trial. And Snoke is very much obsessed with the balance of the dark and the light side of the Force as well. Snoke even chose to train Ben Solo specifically because he has both the dark and the light side of the Force within him. Snoke even states this in the official Force Awakens novel. What you are made of. The dark side. And the light. And in the trailer for the movie. The dark side. And the light. So if Snoke is Mace Windu, he could see himself in Kylo Ren since they both balance both the dark and the light side of the Force. So why exactly would Mace Windu turn to the dark side? Well, as we know, he's already delicately balancing the dark and the light side of the Force, so all it would take is a strong enough push to send him to one side or the other, and being betrayed by Anakin could certainly be the push that was needed. Mace Windu would also have a vendetta against the Skywalkers, as Anakin Skywalker betrayed him, cut off his arm, and allowed Palpatine to scar, disfigure, and almost kill him. So this could be one of the main reasons why he wants to find Luke to kill off the Skywalker bloodline as revenge. He would also want to enact revenge on the Palpatine lineage too, since Emperor Palpatine almost killed him. And if the theory is true that Rey is Emperor Palpatine's granddaughter, he would want to kill her as well as she is the last of Palpatine's bloodline, which would also explain why he's so interested in finding Rey. There's also an amazing fan theory that suggests Mace Windu thinks he himself was the chosen one and not Anakin. It explains why he tries to stop Anakin from being trained in the first place, why he's always mean to Anakin, and even tries to stop him from gaining the rank of Master on the Jedi Council. Also, the prophecy for the Chosen One even explains that the Chosen One will bring balance to the Force, and Mace Windu learned about balance the force perfectly with Vapad. He has a purple lightsaber to symbolize his balance of the force, and he was about to kill Palpatine, the last remaining Sith. So he could still believe he is the chosen one and wants to kill the remaining Skywalkers because they challenge his belief that he is the chosen one and not one of them. Even Han Solo knows he plans on killing Kylo Ren, who is of the Skywalker bloodline as well, when he's finished using Kylo Ren for his powers. 
Mace Windu, like some other Star Wars characters, has a signature lightsaber move that pretty much only he seems to use. It's a move that makes him unique, a move that he uses in every fight we see him in. That move is a backswing slicing move. He even cuts off Jango Fett's head with it and uses the move multiple times when fighting Emperor Palpatine. Well, there's actually one more Star Wars character we see using that move, Kylo Ren. We see Kylo Ren use the backswing slicing move multiple times in The Force Awakens. In fact, he uses it at least three times when fighting Rey, and even more times if you count some of these. So why would Kylo Ren be using Mace Windu's signature move? Well, if Mace Windu is Snoke, then he would have taught Kylo Ren this deadly attack when training him in the dark side. One of the most interesting aspects of this theory points out that Finn may actually be the son of Mace Windu, aka Snoke. But before we can get into why and how, you first need to know that Finn is definitely force sensitive. First of all, when Snoke says to Kylo Ren, there has been an awakening, have you felt it? He's actually referring to the force awakening in Finn, not Rey, specifically the moment when Finn decides to change to the light side while on the battlefield on Jakku. We know this because the scene where Snoke says there has been an awakening was at about 50 minutes into the movie. This is actually way before Rey shows any force abilities at all, since the first time we see Rey use the force was in Maz Kanata's castle during her force vision, but that was almost 20 minutes later into the movie. And the scenes where Rey reads Kylo Ren's mind, does a Jedi mind trick, etc., were all nearing the end of the movie. The only thing that happens before Snoke says there has been an awakening was Finn deciding not to kill for the First Order anymore and changing to the light side when on Jakku. And even Kylo Ren noticed the Force awakening in him when he glared at him. Finn then helped Poe Dameron escape and helped Rey and BB-8 escape. Escape. There's also like 10 other reasons why Finn is force sensitive, but this video is already long enough, so you can watch my Finn Awakens video after this one if you want to hear more on this theory. So since Finn is force sensitive, his parents are likely to be force sensitive as well. And if Mace Windu is still alive and Mace Windu is Snoke, it just makes sense that Finn would be his son. So the theory is that Snoke was disappointed that Finn didn't portray very much potential with the force as a child. So he basically disowned Finn and searched for a child that was gifted in the force like Ben Solo. But he didn't want to completely abandon Finn as he might end up being of some use later on. So Snoke decided to make him a stormtrooper, that way he can keep an eye on Finn and ensure he stays aligned with the First Order. And who better to keep an eye on Finn than Kylo Ren? This would explain why Finn's first mission is such a high profile one, going with Kylo Ren to Jakku. And as we learn later on, Finn was a sanitation worker before while on Starkiller base. So him being on a mission with Kylo Ren is a little suspicious. This also explains why when Finn decides not to fight for the First Order anymore and is standing on the battlefield on Jakku, Kylo Ren suspiciously glares at him before going into his ship. Kylo Ren noticed that the Force awakened in him at that moment. It also explains why later on, when Kylo Ren is told that a stormtrooper helped Poe Dameron escape, Kylo Ren instantly knows that the stormtrooper was Finn. We're checking the registers now to identify which stormtrooper it was. The one from the village, FM-2187. Kylo Ren knows that Finn is force sensitive 
and the son of Snoke, so he's very likely to make his own decisions and rebel against orders. Kylo Ren also goes absolutely berserk when he is told that Finn helped Rey and BB-8 escape Jakku, because this just ensures even more that Finn is betraying not only the dark side, but Snoke as well. And all while Kylo Ren is supposed to be watching over him. We have no confirmation, but we believe FN-2187 may have helped in the escape. Not to mention, the film seems to really focus on Finn's betrayal, like when the stormtrooper angrily calls him a traitor, then tries to kill him, which makes it seem like there's a little more to his betrayal than meets the eye. And finally, when Kylo Ren and Finn meet at the end of The Force Awakens, Kylo Ren is very angry about Finn's betrayal, and seems to take it extra personally. You can really hear it in his voice when he screams, Traitor. Traitor! But when Kylo Ren then fights Finn, he chooses to toy with him instead of just killing him. And when Kylo Ren is finally hit by Finn, he chooses to punch Finn and cut his back instead of easily killing him. Kylo Ren killed his own father, cut the old man at the start of The Force Awakens in half, and has a table of the ashes of the people he's killed. Yet he decides to keep Finn alive, because Finn is still very important to Snoke and the dark side. So there you have it. It's a pretty crazy theory, but even if it doesn't come true, you have to admit it's an interesting piece of fan fiction at the very least. If you have any ideas that can add to this theory, please comment them down below. I'm also going to comment down below some ideas on how Captain Phasma could play into all this. Also, if you haven't already seen it, I made another video going into detail on how Finn is definitely force sensitive. So feel free to watch that video after this one. And if you want to see even more fan theories, I upload videos like these all the time. So click subscribe so you get notified when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I feel the great disturbance in the force.